If you're just a horticultural hobbyist and you're looking to grow some plants inside your house under some artificial lighting, you don't need to go out and buy an expensive PAR meter or even a cheap Lux meter. There's a new app for your smartphone which turns your smartphone into a PAR meter, and the best part is it's free. So here is the app. It is called Corona, and I have the Pro version, and the Pro version just has a few extra features that the regular version doesn't have, but you can still use the regular version without paying for it as a PAR meter. So let me show you a couple things about it. So this is the app when you open it up. This is the PAR meter. Uh, there's actually a bunch of features within this app. I'm not going to talk about every single one of them. I'm going to go over a couple things, and mainly we're going to be comparing this under different light sources to the Apogee MQ500 lab-grade PAR meter and we're going to see how accurate and reliable this actually is. Now, there's actually a few features I want to talk about. First, uh, swiping over here, this is the DLI, uh, or, or Daily Light Integral. So basically what this does is it takes the lighting intensity and calculates in real time the DLI based on your uh, lighting hours, so whether it's 12, 18, or 24 hours, and it figures out if, you're get, if the plants are getting enough energy per day. That's basically what that does. So some plants... You know, they may need less light. Some plants may need more light per day. It just depends. You'll have to look it up and, and reference that. But that's a very useful tool. Uh, you also got here the lux meter. Obviously, it needs to be a lux meter because all this is really doing is doing a conversion factor. And this is actually calibrated under different light sources. Um, also, light temperature. This is also accurate. I tested it under a 5,000K uh, LED light, and it was 5,000K on this. So that is pretty accurate. Uh, down here... If you click this, these are the different features uh, for the types of different types of lighting. So right now, sunlight. In most cases, you're going to be able to use this for LED lighting as long as it's a white light source and not a blurple light. Although it's not really a big deal because these days blurple lights are kind of being phased out. Uh, but if you have a blurple light and you want to be able to test it, you click this here. This says red, blue, LED. And I've tested it, and we're going to test it here and show you how reliable it actually is. So if you are using LED lights, you can just click here, LED full spectrum, and there's a whole bunch of other different types of light here, CMH, uh, fluorescent, compact fluorescent, these are all calibrated. Uh, also, if you have a, uh, a known good source, such as a PAR meter like this, um, this app will actually allow you to ca uh, calibrate it uh, to really dial it in. Now, in order to get this to actually work, what you actually need here is a 20 weight, 20 weight piece of printing paper, and you got to put it over the camera lens. In my case, I have an iPhone 8. It's right there. You cover that up, and then that's going to be able to give you a uh, pretty close to accurate reading on the PAR levels. If you don't cover this up with the paper, it don't even try to use it. It needs to be covered up with a piece of paper. And I tried other pieces of paper, uh, such as tissue paper, even toilet tissue paper, uh, wrapping paper. This really is the best source. Um, I found a way to do a quick modification to it, and that is basically just taking this piece of PVC pipe here, and I cut like a little, I guess that's about a half inch, and then I'll put a little piece of paper on top of it, and you cover up the camera. Now you can kind of see there when I did that, you look at the picture in the background change, you see how you can, that's basically my ceiling, and that's me recording, you can see that in there. But you got to make sure if you cover it up with something in a circular like this, that you're not clipping the edge off. Uh, so basically, you can see a little bit of that ring there in the top. If I move it, it needs the whole camera to be able to calculate. So now we got a full field of view, and then you can put it over top of this like this. And then that's going to give you uh, a little bit better accuracy because it's going to be able to diffuse a light better that way. So now let's test it under a couple different light sources. So this is our first test subject here. This is a blurple light. This is actually the only blurple light I have because all of my grow lights are variations of white light uh, LEDs to be more specific. So this is where a lux meter would fail because lux meters, uh, they don't test in the part of the spectrum that's outside the range of what our vision sees. The point of a lux meter is to basically measure light intensity based on what the human eye sees. So the highest peak is going to be the green yellow part of the spectrum. So a lux meter, if you're testing under a source that has a large amount of red light, it's going to give you uh, a bad reading if you're trying to use a conversion factor to convert it to PAR. This is where this app is just amazing. So watch this. Let me turn the Apogee MQ500 PAR meter on. Look at that. It's almost identical, and that's really surprising to me because you wouldn't think a smartphone is capable of this, but with everything being calibrated uh, and uh, set up right, especially if you look here, I basically made the tops of the sensors the same. 
that's that's just really amazing to me. So let's go on to the next source of light. So here are two Mars Hydro SP3000s, and they are in their dimmest setting possible. And this is actually a mixture of color temperatures, warm white and cool white diodes, along with some red diodes in there as well. Although even though there's red diodes in there and some UV, it doesn't seem to affect even if you're using a lux meter. Uh, I've tested that plenty. So here's what you're looking at with the smartphone app. I know it's kind of hard to see, but we got 110 micromole on the smartphone app. Now let's see what happens when we turn on the Apogee meter. Look at that. Identical. And those sensors are as close as they can be together, but look at that. 109 reading on both of the meters. I'm still pretty blown away as to how accurate and reliable this is so far using a smartphone. I really never would have thought it could re actually replace a power meter. Uh, we're going to test a few more things though. So now what we're going to do is we're going to max out the brightness on these lights here. We're going to turn it all the way up. And I don't think I'm going to be able to see the screen on the smartphone with this because it's way too bright. Uh, but I'll just tell you, I guess you have to take my word for it. There's no way to really show you because it's just going to be overpowering on the screen. Um, but now it's at max brightness and let's take a look at the meters. I don't really think you can see it on there, you probably can't, um, but what I'm looking at is about 867 micromole on the smartphone app. Let's turn on the Lux, or the power meter here, 840. Let me back off a little bit here, see if that affects it a little bit. Yeah, so. There's a slight difference here, so we got eight, about 840 on the Apogee meter, and it's about 869, 870 on the smartphone app. I don't think you can see it there, maybe you can. But uh, still, that's even though it's a little bit off, um, that's not really going to make too much of a difference if you're measuring it for your plants. Uh, that's still pretty close, and I would, uh, I would pay for that app any day, even if it's off by that little bit. Okay, so now I have it under a mixed color temperature grow light. This is a hidden harvest light. You can see there it is uh, warm white dominant. And the smartphone app is saying it's about 117 ppfd. Let's just see what the Apogee meter says. Look at that. 113, 114. It says 116 on the app. So that's that's still really, really close. I mean, even if you were to buy several of these here, that's still going to be off by a few micromole. They're not all going to be exactly identical. Uh, so there's going to be a percentage of tolerance there, tolerance there. So still very impressed with this. So this is a Sansi Grow Light. It is a single color temperature white LED. I believe it is about 4,000 K. Uh, we can actually test that with the app. But it has kind of like a greenish, yellowish hue to it and it's not very pleasing if you just use it for like indoor lighting or something but it doesn't seem to matter for plants i've used it already plenty uh, you don't really see it on camera because of the white balancing but here is what the app says it says 116 ppfd or micromole let me turn on the apogee meter 109 so i don't know why this light shows the biggest difference of all the lights so far uh, considering it's still a white led light but even still, you're only talking about a few micromole difference, and that's no reason to say that this app doesn't work, because so far it absolutely does work extremely well. Uh, if you're just a home grower or just a hobbyist, you're not doing experimenting where uh, accuracy matters, uh, this, this is nothing. You can absolutely still use this, even though it's not matching that meter. I mean, this is free to use this feature, this PAR meter for this app, uh, to where this here costs $500. So you you decide. Uh, I would absolutely buy this any day, even if I had to pay uh, money for it to be able to use that power meter feature. So here I wanted to show you what happens if you do the recommended thing with this app, and that is taking the paper and just putting it right over top of your uh, camera. Uh, so basically what I've done is I've just taken off this little device that I made for it, and that's what happens when you put the paper over it, even if I was to just push this down. You see how the number changes and it's not, you know, it's, it's quite a bit of difference from the actual PAR meter there uh, from Apogee. And that's why I made that little thing because you get, uh, when, you, when you stand it up higher above the camera sensor and cover it up, it gives you better uh, diffusion of the light where if it's closer like this, it's not quite the same and you can see it changes the number on the screen there. Now if I take it off, 
now the sensor is exposed and you're just looking at the camera is just seeing the light as it is and you see how the number changes you cannot use this unless you have a piece of paper over top of your camera the front facing camera and here is the color temperature meter this is under a 5000 K light that's what it says on the light itself and you can see that it seems to be pretty accurate or just about 5000 K and if you change the angle of the camera it's going to change the uh, measurement just a little bit but um, not a big deal it's pretty close so let's go ahead and test the other lights all right going back to the hidden harvest light we're just checking the color temperature of it and we're just seeing if it's right where it should be which it is at 3650 and what I've done here is I've actually put a piece of paper over the camera sensor and that actually does a better job if you do that because like I was just showing you with the other light changing the angle of the camera uh, changes the Kelvin if I put the piece of paper over that the number doesn't really change as much now in this case not really at all uh, so I would recommend just leaving your piece of paper over there for all of your testing okay now going back to the Sansi grow light I said before it was about 4000 K uh, I think that's actually what it says on the light itself and you can see here this is saying it's 4150 so it's very very close all right I got one more light to test here I just got this uh, this is the Mars Hydro FC 3000 and I'll probably be talking about this in another upcoming video but we're going to go ahead and unbox this here and we're going to test this out with the app so here's the Mars Hydro FC 3000 uh, for anyone interested because this is actually a new model with the company uh, they just came out with these I like this design because it's uh, very similar to actually this over here. Uh, these are LED strip lights from another company. I've been using these for a long time. Right now it's growing a Blue Java ice cream banana tree. And I've actually used those in particular lights to grow uh, sugar baby watermelons in my basement. And that's only, that's less than 100 watts of light up there. But it spreads it out evenly and uh, you get a much better coverage area with it. And it's more efficient that way. So. This is basically the same thing. This particular model isn't meant for a large tent. Uh, this is for a smaller tent. But because it's got these strips on here, an open frame design, it has much better cooling on it. And this particular light is very efficient. Uh, it's got a mean driver. And I really like these new modules they came up with. You can connect multiple of these together, on and off switch here. And you got a dimmer switch over here. So you can control all the lights that you connect to this one with just this one module. So you turn the switch on and off, it turns all of them on and off control this dimmer, it controls the dimness on all of them. So it's pretty neat. So let's go ahead and, and test this light and see what we got. This is sitting about 20 inches off the floor. So 20 inches off the floor, this is a center par measurement for the FC3000, about 640 micromole. And if you see here, if I move this towards the outer edge out here, you see it doesn't change by a whole lot. You know, 100 micromole difference, it's not a whole lot. So it gives really even coverage. If I go to this other edge over here, uh, we're actually still getting pretty high there, so that's pretty even. For this outer edge over here, same thing. So yeah, it's it's a pretty nice design because of the way it distributes the light. So we're, now we're going to compare that to the uh, smartphone app. Okay, so here it is, the comparison with the uh, Mars Hydro FC3000. And just like before, when you get into the higher power levels, it seems like the uh, smartphone app is a little bit off compared to the lab grade power meter and uh, I'm not really quite sure why that is but it's still not that much of a difference you got 710 I'm not sure if you can see the screen there but 710 711 ppfd compared to 670 ish on the apogee meter so still it's not a huge difference and that's not going to be a big deal if you're using it to grow your plants it's not like that's going to mean the difference between burning them out or not having enough light it's still close enough and uh, it's, I think it's still really a great app so if you're interested in anything you saw here in this video, uh, mainly a couple of the lights and the app itself, go ahead and check the video description. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.